Brothers and sisters in Christ, some difficult words from Jesus in the gospel. If he came to bring division on the earth, if that's what he came to do, considering how bad things are out there right now, I'd, say he's, I'd have to say he's doing a pretty good job. It's pretty bad. But these are odd words from our Lord. Because we know our, our Lord is, is the God of love. And so for here, to hear him say, I wish the world was on fire and blazing. To hear him say, I have come not to establish peace, but division. is very difficult for us who know very well that Jesus is the Prince of Peace. Prince of Peace. And we know that his mother, our blessed mother, is called the Queen of Peace. How can it be that he has come to bring division? What's going on here? What's this, this division in a member of the Holy Trinity who is, by his very being and his essence, a union of persons? What can be going on here? I think it's important to distinguish between what would be unacceptable division and something that could be considered a good division. There's something that's... Division isn't always good. And here's a few examples. Division that is caused by foolish aggression, just going off after somebody, or one group is going after another group, being inconsiderate of it. Uh, this can cause a division that is, that is evil. I would say any division in our faith is also unacceptable. We have one faith. We believe in one God. This is not the division that Jesus comes to bring. So anytime we have division in the faith, we know that something's wrong. And it's not what Jesus comes to bring. An unacceptable division would be, for instance, division because of love of money and worry about it. Divisions can happen all of the time because of worry about money and a desire for it, and a love for it most of all. Jesus says that's the root of all evil. This is not the division that Jesus comes to bring. There's also an evil division that results because one refuses to ask for forgiveness for what one has done wrong. Or, on the other hand, if one refuses to forgive uh, somebody else who has done wrong to them and is asking for forgiveness, that creates a division that is undesirable unacceptable division. And it's not what Jesus is speaking about here. What is the division? Because Jesus did say he's coming to bring division. What is it that he's coming to bring? Well, first and foremost, we can talk about the division that he's going to bring from us and our sins. From us and our sins. It is easy sometimes to sit in our sins, whatever it might be, whatever our vice might be, and to try to justify it and say, I want to sit in my sin. My sin makes me feel good. I'm justified in my sin. This is what stirs up the fire in the heart of Jesus. And he says, no, you are my sheep. I will not allow the wolves to deceive you in your sin. I am filled with a fire to come and save you. And so Jesus comes with a strong fire to, and he does not allow us to be at peace with our sins. This is not a true peace. Jesus also bring, brings division. It can happen when one party decides to remain faithful to Jesus and the church, and the other party wants to go another way. So following the teachings of the church can often bring division. This is... A sad moment, but it is what Jesus comes to bring because following the truth and doing so in love is not always easy. It creates a rupture. And Jesus is saying, this is the division that I have come to bring. Remain faithful to me. You know, because we can fall into a, an attitude that, that makes me think, well, I'm going to bring about peace at any cost. I'll do anything to maintain the peace I saw a, a clip from uh, the, that movie, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, and we know uh, what the, the very rich girl has a dad who will do anything for her, uh, even 
uh, follow her to her own demise just to make her happy. A ridiculous, a ridiculous uh, portrayal of trying to maintain that peace. It's not the peace that Christ wants us to have. There are difficulties. There are ruptures that have to happen. Difficult things that have to happen. Divisions that occur. And some of them are because Christ comes to bring them. One person in the family wants to go to Mass on vacation. Everybody else is saying, ugh, to go to Mass. And they can all turn against the person that wants to go to Mass. Say, are you crazy? We're on vacation. You should just take it easy. So there can be a division that happens. Jesus said, that's the division I came to bring. This is the division I came to bring. Another division that Jesus comes to bring very firmly is the division... Uh, He's coming to, to divide the evil one and his kingdom. You know, the, the evil one has to bring his minions, his evil spirits together to, uh, to work together in order to really fight against a Christian. You know, so you have the, the uh, evil uh, demon of anger who has to work alongside the demon of envy and the demon of lust and the demon of gluttony, etc. They have to work together. Jesus hammers them and sends them fleeing. He came to bring division to the evil one, to, to destroy his kingdom. This is the division that Jesus uh, does come to bring. It's also good to think about Jesus as a div the divine physician. This can help us to think about what division he brings. A very good physician especially a surgeon, will come in and tell the person who has an infection or who needs a replacement in their body that a division is going to have to happen, a surgery is going to have to happen in order to get the infection out. News of that division in my body, or another person's body, brings about great consternation and maybe even, even fear. But it's a necessary experience. It's a necessary surgery in order for a person to be healed. This is what Jesus comes to bring, this kind of, of division. And so we should be aware of the fact that Jesus comes to bring division, but he doesn't do so by wielding a sword. And at no point did he, did he create a, a, a nation behind him while he was here on earth. Jesus didn't say, I established this nation here on earth. He didn't have any need for an army. When Peter took up his sword and was ready to fight those soldiers who came to arrest Jesus, he told them, put it away. Don't need that sword. So instead of a sword, what is it that Jesus uses? I, I think we could take the S off of the front of the word sword and put it at the end of it, and we find out what Jesus uses. That's his words. His words are powerful. When those soldiers came, Jesus said, I am here. And all of those soldiers fell down. His words are powerful. And so I think it can be a discernment for us when we're, when we're thinking, am I bringing about division in my family for Christ or am I just wielding my anger? We can discern, am I wielding a sword or am I being true to Christ's words? We don't have to be, be angry ourselves. We don't have to create a bad division just because we're angry. But we may cause division if we're remaining faithful to his words. Think about the prophet Jeremiah in that first reading today. He refused to tell the king just what he wanted to hear and all of the people what they wanted to hear. There were plenty of prophets that were saying what everybody wanted to hear. Only Jeremiah was willing to say, nope, this is not, there's, there's some bad news for you, king. And what happened? Where did it get Jeremiah? down in the well, all by himself, sinking in the mud. This is where the word, got, word of God got him, separated, divided from everyone else. And yet this is exactly what God wanted. And it brought about a conversion. At the end, they pulled Jeremiah out from that mud because they knew he was right. They knew he was right. And so we need every encouragement, every encouragement to, to remain faithful, especially when we're bringing about 
uh, certain divisions in the world by following Christ, by remaining faithful to him. We need every help that we can. And so uh, the letter to the Hebrews encourages us. He says, since we're surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let's rid ourselves of every burden of sin that clings to us and persevere in running the race that lies before us. What is this cloud of witnesses that he's talking about? These are the saints. You know, on the front of the cathedral, we have eight saints depicted right on the cathedral to remind us in the, in the hallway here on your way out. You'll see the name of saints, the saints who went before us. On uh, the 10th, August 10th, we had St. Lawrence who refused to give the king any of the, the, the chalices of the, of the church. Instead, he gave the king what was really valuable, and that was the poor people. And because of this, he was put to death. He was put to death on the rack. He was killed for Christ, burned at the stake. And today, on August 14th, we celebrate St. Maximilian Kolbe, who is, uh, he's a saint for our difficult day. He died for a man in the concentration camp, showing an act of love and being, being killed by starvation. What drives a person to do this? It's not just wielding a sword. There were plenty of soldiers doing that. It was his conviction of the word of God and living out the words that Christ taught us to live. We need to have his, his words living and effective in our lives. And, and if we do that, then we're going to be able to sever ourselves from every burden of sin that clings to us and persevere in running the race. We're keeping our eyes focused on Christ, seeing beyond the facades of this life to that life that lasts forever. We come here to Mass and we receive Jesus in the Holy Eucharist. He gives us the strength then to face the difficulties of our times and to remain faithful even when it does create divisions and causes chaos. Our Lord himself gives us his body and his blood to strengthen us in the weakness of our flesh so we can fight against the evil one and his minions who are, who are coming together and fighting against us. So let's keep our eyes fixed on Christ. Let's be encouraged by the example of the saints. And let's not be afraid about the division that we cause by following Christ. Jesus is the one who's calling us. I have come to bring division, that there may be true peace in the kingdom to come. Let's prepare our hearts to receive him and ask him for every grace this week to remain faithful, even in the midst of all of our difficulties. He will not abandon us. He is with us forever. We prepare our hearts to receive Jesus in the Eucharist now.